How's it going everyone? It's Alvi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to talk about our next major winter storm that's expected to move through the Midwest as well as the Northeast and the next pattern that's going to develop for much of the United States over the next week where now we're going to begin to see the jet stream sort of straighten out to the point where temperatures should be much warmer than average throughout the United States as we approach the next several days. But first, let's take a look at the current radar and we clearly clearly see that there's plenty of convective activity going on right over California as well as portions of southwestern Oregon and taking a look closely we do see that some of these rain showers are heavier um, they um, they are capable of maybe producing some um, isolated areas of flash flooding so you want to make sure to watch out for that throughout California but more importantly in the long term future this could be our next major winter storm for the Midwest and the North Northeast, more specifically the Great Lakes region of the Midwest. But if we were to zoom out a little bit more beyond this storm system, we do see that much of the United States is mostly dry. We of course had this snowstorm that has moved through the Northeast, but now it's most of the snow showers are primarily offshore. We do have some lake effect snow bands developing um, on the backside, but since the winds are relatively weak over the Northeast, it's unlikely to produce any major lake effect snow event. So you won't need to worry much about that if you're along the coast of the Great Lakes. So outside of that, it's primarily dry for the United States, but that's expected to change over the next few days like I'm gonna show you right now. So here's a quick look at the latest run of the European model and if you were to continue to move forward with the forecast we eventually will see the storm system move ashore along the California coast right around um, the midday on Sunday. That's where the rain showers should be enhanced right up along the coast of California so you definitely need to watch out for that. But as we continue to head further into the more long-term future headed into late Sunday into early Monday the rain showers and the snow showers in the higher elevations should move into Arizona Utah as well as portions of Nevada I don't expect this to produce a very heavy amount of snowfall mainly due to the fact that this storm system will be very weak as it continues ahead further eastward but you should still expect maybe around three to six inches in the higher elevations of New Mexico Arizona Utah as well as Colorado but for the areas in the lower elevations such as Phoenix um, you should of course expect only a rain event but not that much rain since this storm like I said is relatively weak but that's going to change as this storm system continues to head further eastward because we're going to see a very strong ridge develop right around the eastern half of the United States which is definitely a uh, which is definitely different from what we've been seeing over the past several weeks over this area of the United States because primarily for the past few weeks there's been a pretty strong jet stream dip that has been making conditions a lot colder and snowier than average for much of this portion of the United States but that's expected to change this week as a strong ridge is expected to develop and enhances a strong southwesterly flow to bring that warm air for northward as well as more humid air mass a little bit for northward to the point where temperatures should stabilize closer to average and in a lot of cases in the Midwest above average but before it does that there's still a possibility of a major winter storm for the Midwest as we approach early next week so by the midday on Monday we should we should see the convective activity enhanced right over Texas and going northward into Oklahoma and Arkansas where some of this precipitation could be a wintry mix where we could see sleet or a mix of rain and snow associated with this storm to some so you definitely need to watch out for that in portions of Oklahoma Arkansas and Missouri eventually it is expected that the southerly winds will be strong enough to where it'll transition into entirely a rain vet for Oklahoma Arkansas and Missouri but you still at least early on need to watch out for that possibility of may maybe some wintry mix creating a, um, conditions that are a little bit more slick on the roadways than what you'd expect so definitely watch out for that in those areas but moving forward we do see the rainfall becomes a little bit heavier the area of rainfall as well becomes larger right over eastern Texas and Louisiana where you could expect potentially a pretty powerful heavy rain threat um, for Louisiana and other states in the southeast like Mississippi um, and this would occur by the way right around the late Monday and to the 
um, early Tuesday time frame. So in Houston, you need to watch out for this. New Orleans, potentially, you need to watch out for a heavy amount of rainfall by the time we approach the Tuesday morning time frame. And even going into Tuesday afternoon, but um, shifting our focus a little bit further northward, we see that there's going to, there, um, despite the fact that there's going to be a strong amount of ridging around the eastern half of the United States, there's still going to be just enough of a strong northerly flow to where it's likely that the northern side of this storm system will have an area where the rain will transition into a wintry precipitation, um, whether it's in the form of wintry, uh, wintry mix or a snowfall accumulation, it's likely to occur since there's going to be just enough cold air um, that's going to linger around over the next several days despite the existence of this ridge. And the reason being is due to the fact that there's going to be a small Alberta Clipper system moving through Canada that's going to bring just enough of a, of a northerly flow that would push uh, cooler air for southward and make it stay a little bit longer than if this low pressure system weren't in this position because we clearly see that the low is located right around this area and of course on the eastern side of every ridge along the northern hemisphere the winds will come from a northerly direction and since this low is here to help enhance that pressure gradient and that northerly wind speed we're going to see that cold air linger down just south enough to where um, portions of Michigan, um, Wisconsin, as well as Northern Illinois, potentially as far south as Chicago and Detroit could get involved with some snowfall. So in this scenario, we see that this is a pretty significant snowstorm for much of uh, Michigan. I'll say just north of Detroit, as well as Chicago. For those cities, it's going to be a very close forecast because it seems like both of the most reliable computer models, the European and the GFS model, are debating where exactly that rain snow line will be located. If it's, of course, located a little bit further southward, you should expect much more snowfall accumulation than if it were a little bit further northward. And again, it really all depends on the strength of this of this Alberta Clipper moving through. If it's a little stronger, then the northerly flow will be stronger for the cool air to be a little bit further southward for the chance of snowfall to be more, um, to definitely be higher for Chicago as well as the and surrounding areas but if we see this Alberta trough not as um, strong as anticipated and the pressure gradient a little bit weaker than anticipated which would reduce the northerly winds then that would push a colder air further northward and it'll more likely be a rain vent in a scenario like that for Chicago as well as Detroit. So I'll definitely um, keep you guys updated over the next few days. As of right now, it seems like the European model with its latest run, is taking more of a rain event for Detroit and Chicago, maybe some wintry mix um, or ice accumulation. I don't expect much ice accumulation, however, but it, um, it could easily change over the next several days. And we're still around four days out and the GFS model is taking a forecast that's at least around the ballpark but not necessarily very close to the point where you could say with any sort of confidence that Chicago or Detroit would experience either a rain vent or a snow vent definitively so there's still a lot of time for this forecast to definitely become a lot um for the forecast models to definitely become more confident but if we were to continue to move forward into the Tuesday night and into the early Wednesday time frame, the snowfall is expected to move into the interior northeast and even portions of the coastal northeast where Boston does get involved with some snowfall. At But in places like New York City, the snowfall is a little bit further northward from you guys. So it's going to be a close forecast for the New York City metropolitan area as well by the time we approach our early Wednesday time frame. Just really all depends, like I said, on this chop and how strong northerly winds will be. So I'll keep you guys updated. But in terms of when you should expect impacts right over the Midwest, so Chicago, you should begin to see precipitation right around early Tuesday, and it should end around early Wednesday. So it should be a 24-hour event. Same goes for Detroit, early Tuesday, expect precipitation, and then the rain should move out a little bit later on Wednesday, uh, maybe closer to the morning time on Wednesday. And then for the Northeast, you should begin to see impacts right around Wednesday morning and it should last all day until um, the early Thursday time frame so that's what you should expect when it comes to timing and if we were to take a look at the GFS model on the flip side the GFS model is taking a, a, not a very different forecast it's still taking a similar trajectory but 
it's very different when it comes to the area of snowfall it's expecting because if you were to take a look at that we see that the snowfall is definitely a lot the area of snowfall is definitely a lot larger and this snowfall extends a lot further to the west let me go to the 18z run but the 18z run as well is showing a similar forecast where now iowa gets involved where in the european mall scenario iowa doesn't get involved at all um so Des Moines, you still need to keep tabs on this with the GFS model wanting to take snowfall in that area. And it really all depends on the strength of this ridge and how quickly it moves northward. If this ridge ends up being a little stronger, then we should expect impacts to be a little bit further westward to where cities like Des Moines would get involved. And I would say that the areas further eastward, it'll be a little bit more difficult for it to be a, a snow event because though um with a stronger ridge i would mean that the there will be a stronger southerly flow which means that the temperature might be too warm um for snowfall in chicago and detroit but if we were to see this ridge weaker on the flip side then we would see the snowfall a little bit further eastward to where iowa wouldn't get involved and maybe southward as well but if we were to continue move forward with the gfs small scenario we see that the snowfall is a lot is decently further northward at least compared to the european model and the snowfall is mainly relegated to the interior northeast and portions of boston while places like new york city are even close to receiving accumulating snowfall so still time to really um for the computer models to get a little bit more confident with their forecast when it comes to their trajectory as well as the exact area of snowfall but um but also they're similar in the regard that the um the strength of this storm system is very similar it just depends on the track and i'll certainly keep you guys updated once we get updates with the forecast but um if we were to take a look at the snowfall forecast from the gfs model at this time we're going to take a look at the european mall snow forecast as well but take a look at the gfs models forecast when it comes to this specific um snowstorm um we clearly see that um there is quite a bit of um the gfs model is expecting a relatively large area of three six inches of snowfall right over cities like des moines um milwaukee is right on the border between receiving no snow to three to six inches of snowfall so milwaukee you definitely need to keep tabs on this storm system and then for northern michigan this is where the snowfall should be the heaviest and this seems to be an agreement between the a gfs and the european model is that you could expect 6 to 12 inches of snowfall along the northern side of michigan but cities like chicago detroit as well as um even areas for a southward into maybe cleveland and new york city you guys aren't even close to receiving accumulating snowfall in this scenario but we see boston does experience some snowfall in this scenario so you definitely need to be aware of that upstate new york as well of new hampshire vermont maine all experience snowfall from this right around three to six inches of snowfall i don't expect it the snowfall accumulation will be that much more than that. It seems like the computer models do have a confident, um, do have confidence regarding the exact amount of snowfall accumulation or the general range, whether this, um, wet, whether or not it snows in your specific location or not. It just really the only uncertainty with this forecast is the exact location right now. But I'll keep you guys updated. Now, take a look at the European models forecast on the flip side. We see that the snowfall is further southward in the european mall scenario so if we were to wait and see um how this loads up so ignore this snowfall this is from today's snowstorm but the snowstorm pretty much has moved out but take a look at the european mall snowfall forecast we see that the snow is a lot further southward um chicago is a lot has much more likely of a shot of receiving accumulating snowfall so does detroit and new york city um boston receives accumulating snowfall so we're definitely going to need to keep tabs on this over the next few days so definitely um stay tuned guys but that's it for now and i thank you guys for watching